Good morning world, welcome to the islands. We're still on Tana. Uh, yesterday's vlog was uh, a bit slow. We were running on island time, island pace, uh, trying to get some interviews done. This morning we shot some beautiful drone footage and now we are waiting, uh, we're packing up and then we're gonna head out to shoot some more interviews about how the reef's been affected by the the uh, climate change in the past couple of decades because it's not good, it's pretty terrible and it's a just, it's just really sad, to be honest. Um, and then hopefully later on we'll get to get into the water as well. Finally use the Aquatech housing and shoot some photos and videos of um, the reef around here. How you going, Jeff? Good. We're uh, pretty stoked we've managed to find a expert in the village here who's protecting his, this nice bit of reef. So we're, pretty, we're looking forward to going and interviewing him and seeing what he's learned and what, he, what changes he's seen. So. Sweet. And what are you eating? Cacao. Raw cacao. Organic, it's just pretty much chocolate in its most basic form. And it's amazing. It gives you a lot of energy, you only need a little bit. Brekkie done. <laughs> Hanging with the locals. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Some rain, eh? <laughs> Good figs everywhere we walk. Jeff sees trees and it's like, oh, bro, look at this, look at that. I'm, I'm learning, yeah. learning heaps. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we picked up Fred or Alfred, uh, one of uh, Jean Pascal's cousins. Everyone's a cousin here, fuse your mate to Cuzzy. And uh, he does a lot of um, work protecting the reef, conservation efforts. So we're gonna ask him some questions and see how he's saying every. Everything impacting the reef, which leads to you know different types of fish and all that, and food, and it goes so far. It's crazy. Small, small things have such a big impact, and I think he's going to show us the reef as well. So, should be good. I chose an area where, in my own thought, I I see as it is a good ground for fish and reefs. We just had a workshop, one week workshop, and that's when I have some knowledge of. What is reef yeah. and what is sea turtle? Yeah. Uh, what are in endangered species to protect, yeah. especially like sea turtle? Yeah. So now I have knowledge. Yeah, knowledge and getting more information and willing to get more information so I can know about my environment and to look teach. after it. Yeah. So this is where the airport, the one who cut the airport, right yeah. through here, to the south and to the north. And you're fighting to stop the airport? Yeah, I'm fighting really hard. What, what are the reasons why you don't believe an airport will benefit the environment? Yeah. What, what are the reasons? Uh, well, the reason is that like pollution and I have some knowledge of that. Con uh, yeah. Help helping climate change. And in, in this area, it, it's not like the other areas where we have Fruit trees growing wild, you can have free food, you know. But when the airport, he, when they build an airport, there's no free fruit tree. You can just take it free. Cutting. Yeah. So it's it's a really big disaster for us. Without knowing it, to let the airport. Yeah. Okay. So there must be an, a workshop in Boto Solution area. Yeah. So I'm going I'm gonna go for the chiefs that are fighting really giving the pressure for the airport. I'm gonna get them to sit in a workshop to Discuss. to remind them of what the duty is as a chief. Because in my culture a chief is not to 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 fight for development, no, it's to look after the life of people and that's environment. To look after them everybody is fair. There's fairness in, in people, you know. But now we going in a system that I don't think it, it will test, there will be fairness, you know. Yeah, it man. will be a competition. Yeah. yeah.
We've arrived at the Nare Marine Reserve by the uh, Nare tribe. So no fishing zone. This is a, a, a self-started project. These guys just want to protect the reef and make a difference and preserve it. And right outside of it, there's a fishing boat, like pretty much in the reserve. Um, yeah, there's a little island here. This is chock full of tradition. There's hot springs just around the corner. There's coral here. We see purple coral, which might be a sign of the coral um, protecting itself, going into almost the final stage of of its being before it completely dies off. Um, <laughs> right there, I don't know if you can see it. Landslide, trees fallen down. Um, all that sediment then gets washed into the coral and dies off and then the fish don't have food and stuff or homes. It's just, uh, it's like, it looks amazing. It looks beautiful on the outside and the efforts are beautiful, but then you, you think about what's happening to it and it's just like, oh, it's so dire and you just wanna, just makes you wanna do stuff. We're about to have our minds blown. Yeah, anyways, that being said, we're gonna check on the Aquatech water housing. They're also uh, supporters of the of the trip. They've given us a beast of a water housing and we're gonna hopefully get some great footage uh, in the water. Here we have it. The beast. Really grateful for this one. Um, always wanted one of these. I've got one for my 5D, not for the 1DX. As you can see, this fits the full camera in it, which is gonna give us amazing footage. This is the dome which will go in front. Let's uh, set up, I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll go to some water scenes. And here we have it, the beautiful Delphin 1D, 1DX Aqua Housing. Guys, this is a bit of a plug. I'm just really, really appreciative of the support that Aquatech's given us by loaning us this for the trip. Uh, super excited about using it. Please don't drop that. Uh, let's cut to some uh, water footage, or one, two, three. Now we have the knowledge that reefs are the homes of the fish and they, like the trees of the seas that help the trees from the land. And I really, I really think if the reefs are gone and our life balance will be not really balanced to, or our environment will not look after us well, better than both of them if the marine life so the reefs are healthy and the land trees are healthy maybe they can look after us for a long yeah long time yeah. amazing interview done alfred's a total legend what an effort walking down the beach i'm picking up pieces of plastic like you know keeping the beach a bit a bit clean and i look to my right and there's just like rows of plastic that's just washing up pretty fucked and then the other boys they're just picking up coral that's been destroyed and washed up and it, it just looks amazing, I'll show you. So, 
now is wash out and uh, dead corals. Yeah. So now when we bring home, we just put like a decoration in yeah in the house, like we decorate so the house with. It. Even though it's dead, it still has a use. Yeah. Even even though it's dead, lost his its uh, original color, but now we we will use for decoration. Yeah. These had color before. Yeah, some blue, red, and um, where is that? Become all white. Yeah. yeah. Here we have uh, some of that purple coral we were talking about before. What about the plastic? Is there plastic on the beach every day? You always pick up the plastic. Yeah. But... Every day I come to clean up, but the next time you come, there's always plastics yeah. coming ashore. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. If the beauty of that beach and that little island and the coral garden wasn't enough, there's a watermelon plantation right here and we're currently walking, we're like 100 meters away from the beach we're walking to a hot spring it's just like, there's so much natural beauty here on this one little island like Tana is so small, it's the volcano goes a couple of kilometers north of that they've got so much beauty just on the one island and this is one of I don't even know how many islands there are in the Pacific Ocean on the planet and yeah it's just mad. I could live my whole life here and keep discovering new things. It's very inspiring. It's like I just want to make, do good things, you know? We're back. Along with a watermelon and some dead coral. Final interview done with Jean Pascal, the legend that runs this place. Uh, everyone, you gotta go check out the website or the Booking the Com listing. I'll put it in the description down below because it's absolutely amazing. It's literally paradise. Don't have much time in this card left, so I'm gonna try and smash through the ending here. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna say, so I'll figure it out in the next shot. To round off an already amazing day, Jean Pascal and Kiki took us up to one of the mountains, one of the highest observation points where you could see the volcano, and I got to finally shoot my Astro Volcano time lapse uh, shot that I'd been waiting for almost for two years to shoot. and. It was better than I would have expected, so I'm gonna finish this video with showing you one of my personal favorite time-lapse shots I've ever shot in my whole life. I hope you enjoy it, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video. offloading all that tasty footage from today. Today was a big one. Big, big beefy day. How you feeling? I'm half cut, <laughs> but I'm there. <laughs> that was awesome, man. <laughs> so good. You're way more active now than you were before. Oh, I've just had so much. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's catch some Z's, bro. We got about four hours of sleep before we got to head off. Easy money. Nice.